Welcome to ECDPM's Guide to EU Decisions on Africa. This presentation aims to inform people who would need to understand more about the dynamics of EU-Africa relations, in particular how the European side works. My name is Seta Abebebekele, I am from Ethiopia and I work in ECDPM's EU External Action Programme. The European Centre for Development Policy Management ECDPM is an independent and partisan think and do tank, not attached to the European institutions. ECDPM has been working on EU Africa relations for over 25 years, working with stakeholders from Africa and Europe. This presentation is primarily informational as it cannot cover all the politics, economics, and history of complex relationships. Please refer to the latest publications on our website for in-depth analysis of recent developments in Africa-EU relations. I will now hand you to my colleague Clem Silverman, who will tell you more about the institutional structure of the EU. European and African leaders met in Brussels in April 2014 for the fourth EU-Africa Summit. This presentation will show some of the outcomes of the summit, the financing of the EU-Africa partnership, real-life dynamics of decision-making, and where the EU-Africa relationship stands now, with a particular focus on the EU side of the partnership. Thank you, Asete. My name is Clem Silverman, and I'm a Communications Officer here at ECDPM. How is the European Union organised? As a result of Europe's catastrophic experience of the Second World War, European states started a process of economic and political integration to ensure peace, stability and prosperity. Today, the European Union is now a union of 28 European states, including many former countries of the Soviet Union. European integration is a constant effort and it can never be taken for granted. Currently, 18 member states share the same currency, the euro, and not all member states agree on the idea of stronger political integration. How does the European Union work? The European Union is a regional organisation ruled by a treaty between 28 EU member states. The European Union is currently ruled by the Lisbon Treaty, signed in 2009. The most important EU institutions are the European Council, which is where all the heads of state of the 28 countries meet to set the political agenda of the European Union. The President of the European Council facilitates consensus among EU member states. This person is now Mr Donald Tusk, a former Prime Minister of Poland. The Council of the EU, also just called the Council, gathers ministers of different EU member states. They meet to adopt EU laws and coordinate EU policies in many different areas. The European Commission is the executive body of the European Union. The European Parliament is directly elected by EU voters. It has legislative, budgetary and an oversight role. The European External Action Service, or EEAS, was established in December 2010 and serves as a European Foreign Service alongside EU Member States' own diplomatic services. The EU has 140 EU delegations around the world. EU delegations are like EU embassies, though they don't deal with consular matters. The European Commission plays several roles. It proposes EU legislation, implements and monitors EU policies and manages the EU budget. It is led by a president proposed by the European Council and elected by the European Parliament. The president is now Jean-Claude Juncker, former Prime Minister of Luxembourg. There are seven vice presidents and 27 commissioners. Each member state appoints one person to join the College of Commissioners. The Vice Presidents have a steering and coordinating role in some macro areas, coordinating the work of clusters of Commissioners. The High Representative of the Union for Foreign Policy and Security Policy is also one of the Vice Presidents. They do not represent the interests of their own country, but the interests of the EU as a whole. Each Commissioner heads a Directorate General, or DG. 
Of particular relevance for Africa is DG Development Cooperation Europe Aid, also called DG DEVCO, and that's in charge of managing EU aid towards Africa. Then DG Trade is in charge of conducting trade negotiations with Africa, including the contentious negotiations on Economic Partnership Agreements, or EPAs. DG ECHO is in charge of humanitarian aid and emergency response, including the Ebola outbreak. The Commission proposes and implements policies. It makes legislation proposals to the Council and to the Parliament. It manages the EU budget and financial resources, which include development cooperation funding. It coordinates and harmonises 28 national policies. It leads negotiations with third countries on behalf of the EU, such as economic partnership agreements with African regional organisations and countries. The Council of the EU gathers the 28 member states' ministers every month. It takes political decisions on behalf of all member states regarding strategic issues. The High Representative chairs the Council's meetings on foreign affairs. Chairmanship of most foreign affairs committees is with the External Action Service. And the Council has permanent structures. The ones most relevant for Africa are the COREPA II is the meeting of member states' permanent representatives or ambassadors to the European Union. The Political and Security Committee, PSC, is where ambassadors discuss foreign and security aspects, crises, sanctions and missions. Geographic and thematic working groups for relations with Africa, relations with the Africa, Caribbean and Pacific group, development policy and relations with North African countries. The European Parliament is directly elected by European citizens every five years. In May 2014, European citizens went to the polls to elect their members for the European Parliament. The result was seen by many as a political earthquake with the rise of anti-EU parties. There are 750 members of Parliament who are grouped by political affiliation and not by nationality. The European Parliament also has a president. Martin Schulz of Germany, who is in his second term as the Parliament's President. The European Parliament, unlike national parliament, parliaments, cannot initiate legislation. The Parliament approves EU legislation together with the Council. It shares the power to decide on the European Union's budget and regulations of financial instruments. It oversees the performance of the Commission and the Council. It is organised in committees. The most relevant for Africa are AFET for Foreign Affairs, DEVE for Development Policies and INTE for Trade. The European External Action Service, or EEAS, was launched in December 2010. It is functionally fully autonomous from the Commission and the Council. One of the key tasks of the EEAS is to ensure that all the different activities that the EU performs abroad are consistent and effective. It is staffed by diplomats of EU member states and officials from European institutions. It is headed by the EU High Representative for Foreign and Security Policy, also Vice President of the Commission. Currently Ms Federica Mogherini, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy. In practice, the EU has not yet managed to build a strong common foreign and security policy and key decisions were still taken by member states' leaders. Things may change with the new European Commission team who took office in November 2014. The relations with the African Union and African countries are managed by the Directorate 2, led by Managing Director Nicholas Westcott. The last couple of years saw a comprehensive review by the EEAS itself and a Court of Auditors report on the External Action Service, the results of which are available online. EU delegations represent the EU abroad, much like traditional embassies, and implement EU external policies. There are currently 51 EU delegations in Africa. The EU delegation is led by the head of delegation or EU ambassador who reports to both the External Action Service and the Commission. Delegations are staffed by a mixture of external action and Commission personnel. Before 2011, the delegations represented the Commission and were mostly managing aid. After 2011, the EU delegations gained more competencies. 
A snapshot of their responsibilities include dealing with political and economic issues, chairing meetings of EU member states' embassies and coordinating their action, leading on the political dialogue with the host country government and implementing EU programmes. For more analysis on EU delegations and their roles, please consult our website for Briefing Note 62, a closer look at EU's external action frontline. Each country delegation has a public information officer who you can contact for more information about the EU and funding opportunities.